Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Aisha and if this is your first time stopping by, please subscribe. So I'm back after a few days, feeling refreshed, needed a few days off, but you all know me, I always come back. So I got my hair done today and my eyebrows done. Is it obvious that I'm a new person? I don't know if any of you can relate, but after a few days having my hair out of like braids or some kind of hairstyle, I just get really, really tired of it. Not even because I have trouble maintaining it or anything. I just find that I have to try harder to do my hair. Like I have to wake up and gel it if I want to do it or do a braid out the night before. No one has time for that. I mean, I at least don't have time for that. So I was like, we're putting some braids back in. And yeah, I did some knotless braids and I'm feeling... Amazing. So since I was in Harlem, I also passed by the H&M there and I was also near TJ Maxx so I could never walk past those stores without buying at least one thing so we're gonna do a little haul. I would never deprive you all of a good haul so yeah, let's get into it. So the first bag is from H&M. I feel like the H&M on 125th always has a good clearance section. When I go anywhere else in Manhattan, it's always really boring stuff but for some reason that H&M, I always find something in the clearance section. So in the spirit of fall, I found a blazer but this one was $20 and it's brown. It's brown guys, my favorite color, my favorite, favorite fall color. So it's kind of like this oversized blazer. I love the color of it, like the chocolate brown. Okay, so this outfit combo is not it, but I just want you to see the idea of how oversized it is. Um, so I guess, yeah, it's kind of oversized, but it's also long because that's like tiptoe for you to see it. I like it. I love the color of it. And it was only $20, which for a blazer is great. I think the quality is pretty decent for H&M. Lately, I've been hitting a jackpot with H&M. So I'm really happy with this. So I've been having such a hard time finding tights for some reason, like the kind of tights you wear with skirts, like in the winter or with like a dress or something. I don't know why, but ever since I've been going into, I couldn't I haven't been able to find good ones lately so I saw these at H&M and definitely had to get them so these are thermal tights which I've never seen them sell this before maybe it's new or I'm just really late and every H&M I go to doesn't have it but it has an insulated tech so it's meant for like cold weather and it was definitely a little more expensive than some of their other tights but I'm guessing because it has this thermal technology we'll see what's actually true but yeah i love getting these when i wear like mini skirts or dresses in the fall and winter and then i went to tj maxx i don't know if any of my stuff was actually really that fun like stuff i bought from here but we're gonna go through it so i got two candles one for my mom upstairs because i just felt like she would like it and then one for me so this is the one that i bought for myself so i love this brand if you ever go to tj maxx please get the sand and fog um candles their candles are amazing and they always have really pretty artwork on their lids which i actually collect these sometimes so i'll show you some that i've collected before so just look at these two candle covers like don't they look like something you would buy they're just so pretty and their candles are affordable this candle that i got here is eight dollars and i mean with such pretty artwork i'm just happy so this scent that I got is Fresh Woods. So I really like this because it's very fall, but not in the pumpkin sense. Like as much as I love pumpkin candles, I've been wanting a break from them and just something more fresh and yeah, something that really makes a room smell lively. I really love the woodsy sense of this. It just smells like cologne. It smells fresh, open, airy. Like I just really, really like this scent. And then the one that I got for my mom, so the scent is white cranberry. So my mom isn't a big fan of like fall scents. Like in the pumpkin scents, she doesn't like those kind of fall scents, but I felt like cranberry would be really nice because it's probably gonna smell fruity and fresh, which I know she does like. So this is the cover, by the way. It says Happy Thanksgiving, so it's perfect. When Thanksgiving rolls around, we'll hopefully still have this. And then I got some satin pillowcases for my pillows because I really need new ones. So I probably won't be able to use these until I wash them. And that is all that I bought today. I didn't really shop that much because I knew this weekend I wanted to shop. But I just kind of peeked in these stores just in case I could find something that I can't find downtown. So right now, I really want to make use of the amazing weather that we have in New York. I mean, it literally feels like summer outside. I can't even believe it especially because this entire week was freezing cold and raining and i mean the entire week starting from like saturday all the way up until about thursday it was just raining straight through it was windy cold nasty it was literally making my mood so down like when the weather is bad my mood is just not it so right now it feels beautiful out so i'm gonna just take a walk probably get some fresh air maybe read my book because i've really been slowly getting into my book so yeah i'm just gonna have a nice little evening stroll before it gets too dark
as soon as I got here. Literally was about to sit down and read and it started raining. interrupted me and I was about to read the book that I bought I think about two weeks ago so at first I was kind of like this is a little slow I don't know but I feel I feel it slowly picking up it's definitely like I know it's gonna be a thriller just the way it's even being set up in the first few chapters I know it's gonna be a crazy plot twist there's just there's something coming I can feel it coming but a couple of weeks ago a subscriber commented that I should um, give like some reviews of books that I read since I'm always reading I feel like I'm always mentioning that that I'm reading some book but I never really follow up on if I liked it or what it was about so we're about to do a little book review segment on here so I've never done this before and I definitely read a couple of books or I've read a couple of books at least and I just feel like I haven't put you on on what the juicy details of these books are if they're worth buying um just what they're about just in case you want to read them so yeah i pretty much have this bucket of books this isn't even all of my books i think these are just more of the recent ones i've read in maybe the past year year and a half or something like that but yeah these books we got a lot so let's begin so i finished this book last month it's called um the seven husbands of evelyn hugo so i actually found out about this book on tiktok and i would see it a lot on people's recommendation list but i honestly didn't know what to think about it or I, I didn't have many or I didn't have a lot of knowledge about it before starting it which I actually like that it was kind of like just jumping into a book with no background knowledge just genuinely like going in and expecting nothing you know but this book completely blew me away and I was really surprised because sometimes when TikTok recommends something it's probably overhyped or it's just it's not that good but this one genuinely I mean I think the plot was amazing so this book happens both in the past and the present which I really like that kind of plot because sometimes I'll get so lost in the past and then it'll snap right back to the present I'll be like oh my gosh I didn't even realize that I was really into it right now but it's about this popular movie star her name is Evelyn Hugo and she's basically I feel like she gives me Marilyn Monroe vibes the way she's such an icon in this book I think she's basically emulating what Marilyn Monroe would be. So a reporter named Monique gets a call from Evelyn Hugo saying, I want you to write an autobiography about my life. So everyone wants the inside scoop on her life. Like, why'd you have so many husbands? She was one of the most successful actresses of her time. She's actually much older now, almost dying, and she wants to write her autobiography. Um, and the details of her life are so juicy. I mean, it's far from what anyone would expect. Everyone is just so focused on, you know, her seven husbands. But when she tells her story from beginning to end, you really see the struggle she went through as a woman trying to climb in the industry, um, what she had to do to get there, like the people she lost along the way. I mean, it is literally such an amazing book. The characters are amazing. I think the plot was written really beautifully. And yeah, it's a lot of plot twists. A lot of you know times you're gonna laugh you're gonna cry like I just think there's so many beautiful moments in this book so I would highly highly recommend this I think I'm gonna rate this one a 9 out of 10 like I genuinely love this book so this is transcendent kingdom so I think I finished this maybe last year or somewhere like really early in this year so I thought this book was really interesting so it's written by a Ghanaian author and the plot of it is about this Ghanaian family who lives here in America and the main character of the book is a sister Gifty and her brother struggles with addiction um which I thought was a really interesting topic for this author to choose because addiction mental health anything like that is such a taboo in African culture or I don't want to say African culture I never want to generalize just growing up in general it's always been taboo you know the first thing your family will probably tell you is you're not praying enough you need to talk to God about it that's pretty much the response you would get so this book really showed that despite having God like this family is very God centered their mother took them to church every week like their mother was very very spiritual um, and very religious but regardless addiction ruined their family dynamic basically destroyed their lives and you're really seeing it from the the eyes of the younger sister who's watching her older brother battle with this addiction and what it's doing to them and how yeah just what it's doing to their family as a whole um and i think this book is just so important because a lot of these topics are so swept under the rug because these do happen and yeah just so many families see it as a taboo the only downside i had about this book is towards the end i felt like it was getting a little bit repetitive like there wasn't really anything more happening i feel like it could have even ended a little earlier it was just like the plot wasn't thickening towards the end you know um so yeah that was the only downside but overall beautiful book you definitely will cry truly heart-wrenching and it really shines light on problems that happen every day but are just swept under the rug so i would give this book 
an 8 out of 10. I would give it higher, but if it wasn't for the ending, just feeling kind of repetitive. But overall, beautiful book. This one. This one is definitely one of the more interesting books um, or like different plots that I've read similar to Transcending Kingdom. So this book is called The Death of Vivek Oji. Um, obviously, the title is the first thing that caught my eye because like, whoa, the death? Like, we're just getting right into it. So this book takes place in Nigeria. The main character, Vivek Oji, as you can guess, dies. Um it's pretty much a plot of the book. So Vivek is half Indian and Nigerian so it's really interesting to see like those two race dynamic dynamics in the book um, and how that also affects a lot of things in the book or a lot of his life. But what really makes this book interesting is that it talks about queer topics, the characters are queer in this, which again another taboo topic that everyone just sweeps under the, under the rug like it doesn't happen but it does and that's why it's important to write stories like this. So the main character is Vivek's cousin um, and he was basically like his best friend and and if you read there's definitely a lot more to it than that but the book kind of follows his life of when he was alive and how his death really affected his family so it's also another book that kind of goes between past and present um and yeah it is it's gonna make you cry there's definitely lots of like plot twists i mean it is just such like truly heart-wrenching story I'm, I'm gonna keep using that word because a lot of the books i read are heart-wrenching like i will be on the bus in the park wherever i am just crying because i'm just like wow this is literally heartbreaking but yeah it's about family friendship loss like love so, so much love this book will really make you feel what it's like to lose someone that you love like if you ever like i think it just it's described so perfectly in the book like you will feel like you knew this person and you lost him as well um so yeah definitely a sad book if you need something that's uh, just yeah really beautiful book i really enjoyed this one i'm gonna give it an 8.5 out of 10. So this book I recently finished a few months ago actually. I think I read it sometime in the summer. So this is The Girl with the Louding Voice. So the main character is a young girl in Nigeria in a small Nigerian village and she's maybe like 14 years old. I mean she's literally a child. Her mother dies and her father decides that he is going to marry her off to a much older man. I mean this man I believe is like in his 40s or something. Basically selling his daughter to this man so he can get money to support himself I guess which is actually a really common practice. I did a project on child marriages in my senior year of high school so this is something that happens to millions of girls in Africa like all across the continent. But yeah she sold them to child marriage and all she wants to do is be a teacher. She's trying so hard to um, basically become educated because her lifelong dream is to teach kids to make an impact to change people's lives. I mean it is so sad like she's sold into marriage and obviously when you're sold into child marriage you have much less of a chance of getting an education of building a life for yourself she is fighting so many obstacles so that she can go to school and eventually one day become a teacher and she goes through so many things on the way i mean it is just like you will cry a lot of times this book was very heavy for me like i genuinely couldn't read it because it just made my stomach turn there was just so many things that were happening to her and it, she just had no support i think that was the thing like she was kind of alone trying to fight for something without having anyone behind her because of the culture she was in. So yeah, definitely a very inspirational book. It will make you cry. It will make you laugh. It will just make you root for her so much and just want her to succeed. So I would give this book a 9 out of 10 because I just think everyone should read it. It is definitely one of those books that sticks with you. And I might make this like a continue continuing thing since I'm always uh, finding new books to read and then every now and then I'll introduce you to a few more books but the next one is Wahala oh my god this book was so good this is definitely one of my favorite books that I've read so it's called Wahala so this is the plot so there's four Nigerian women they all live in London they all have different lives they've been best friends for years and then there's one girl who's a friend of a friend in the group um they kind of lost touch many years before but she reappears in their life kind of randomly um and she's basically trying to insert herself in the friend group um you know she's you know trying to be part of the group she really wants to fit in by the way she's super rich um she's like filthy rich and the minute she joins their friendship group i mean everything starts to fall apart for each and every one of them in their own lives and they can't figure out why and it basically it turns out that this girl has an agenda against them obviously i won't say what it is it's a very big plot twist but yeah it is such a crazy book i mean you really get to follow the drama of these four women and how this one girl is causing so much turmoil in their lives and yeah, you get the plot twist. In the end, you really see what she's truly there for and why she has it out against them or against someone. So yeah, definitely a good book. I would give this one a 9.5 out of 10. I mean, I just thought there was so much drama in it. I was just literally invested. I felt like I was watching someone's like actual story unfold. Like, 
very good book americana so oh my gosh this is the first book i read from chimamanda like i love her she's one of my favorite authors for many years i've been reading her books and this is definitely one of my favorite ones so this book is kind of like a modern day love story so the main character she moves to america um she's separated from you know her love they kind of go separate ways build their own lives so the main character she moves away to america and she's really struggling with what it's like you know she, for the first time she's really realizing her blackness um she's realizing what it means to be in america as an african and then you also have this love story that despite being apart for so many years they're kind of gravitating back towards each other it's been many years since i read this probably like at least three years so i don't remember the full full plot but i just remember being so in love with this book like i genuinely couldn't stop thinking about it weeks after i thought it was so beautifully written um just seeing almost like her growing in this new space and him growing in a different space but somehow they still find their way back to each other very beautiful book so would highly recommend this one i would give this one a 9 out of 10. And then the last one I think I'm going to review because my camera looks like it's about to die soon. So this one is Dominicana by Angie Cruz. So I read this one last summer, uh, summer 2021, and also really loved this story. So it takes place, I believe, in the 60s. Uh, this young girl, her name was Anna. She lives in Dominican Republic and she's married off to a much older guy. They moved to New York City and she's basically alone in this new place where she doesn't speak the language. She's married to someone she doesn't really love. Um, yeah, like just just the struggles of moving to a new country, trying to make your way up, trying to find your place in a, in a foreign place without having your family support. Just there's so much happening. I mean, this book truly made me cry as well, like made me laugh, made me want to root for her, want want better for her. Like, ugh, such a good book, almost like a coming of age book where, you know, she's going into herself and trying to build a new life for herself i would give this one a 9 out of 10. okay i think that's all i'm gonna review because i have a bunch more books but of course like i said we're gonna keep this going because i think this is a good idea like take a break from the fashion from all the other stuff and talk about some books you know so right now i'm gonna shower and eat dinner but i'm so excited because hocus pocus 2 came out last weekend i think or something like that and i'm finally watching it tonight and i've been looking forward to this for the entire week i mean literally this has been keeping me going through the week. I'm going to watch Hocus Pocus and I can't wait. So yeah, we're going to get in some comfy pajamas, have a little spooky movie night. And yeah, I'm going to have a good night. So this is the outfit of the day. It's a little chillier than yesterday. So, you know, we're going for fall cozy vibes today. So I have this like long turtleneck sweater that I had in one of my last hauls. I also have these brown sweats from Unicle that I also had in my last haul. And then for bag, and I kind of just want a bag that could fit everything. And this bag is one of those bags that looks small on the outside, but it has a lot of space. It has front, back pockets. It's a Marc Jacobs bag. So I'm going to wear this for a little pop of color, you know, break up the, the neutrals. And then for jacket, we're finally breaking out one of my favorite jackets of all time. So I got this in 2020 at Urban Outfitters for Black Friday. And I just love this jacket. I love the colors of it. I love how it's like a two-tone brown. It's just so cozy. I feel like a teddy bear when I'm wearing this, you know. So we're going to put this on. I don't know if I need both of these, but I feel like it's better for me to dress warm because... I'm gonna also be running errands today and New York could get really windy sometimes. It could get really windy, so we're gonna put the jacket on. And then for perfume, I haven't really worn this that recently, so I'm wearing the Gentle Fluidity. Um, love this one, especially when it's cold. I don't know, I kind of associate this with colder weather for some reason, which is why I don't, I didn't really wear it a lot in the summertime. So yeah, we're gonna go crazy because I love when people tell me I smell good. And then for sneakers, we're wearing one of my favorite sneakers of the year. I've been wearing this like all the time. This is, or these are the New Balances. I can't believe I used to sleep on New Balance. I always thought they were like practical workout shoes, but I didn't think 
I could actually wear them with outfits, but love these shoes. I always say compliments on them and they match the tones of the rest of my outfits. So right now I'm getting my nails done, which I'm so excited for because I haven't gotten my nails done in months. I think the last time I may have gotten my nails done would be like July or something, like sometime in the summertime. I took a long break from doing them just because, I don't know, I do like wearing my natural nails most of the time, but I want a break. Like I want something fun and I've been seeing a lot of these fun Pinterest nail inspo like fall colors fall designs and i just feel like this is the perfect time to wear some fall nails because by next month it's gonna basically be winter so yeah i'm really excited so my nail tech is in harlem it's funny i was just there yesterday but going back to harlem right now but before i go i really want to try this new coffee shop that opened up near me i guess it's like a donut shop but they sell coffee there because i see people walking out with coffee all the time so I really want to try that, take a break from Starbucks, support a small business. And it's also really cute in there. Like they have this Instagrammable spot, like this pink setup, very cute. So I'm going to stop by before I head to Harlem. So today we're going to maybe continue our fall shopping from the last video. You saw I was getting a lot of basics. This video might be more like staples because I realized I don't have a trench coat. Um, I may have mentioned my last trench coat was like from college and it definitely like I've just outgrown it. It doesn't look the same anymore. So I really want to get a good quality trench coat that's going to last me a really long time. I also need new leather boots because, again, the last pair that I bought is from college and they look so busted. Okay, I will see you all when I'm out. I am literally obsessed with my nails like this is exactly what the inspo picture was like she just uh, my nail tech is literally the best I'm gonna put her page on the screen for sure like don't these look amazing they're so fall they match my outfits uh, I literally love these I never did anything like this either so this is definitely something new So I'm finally back and before I body my Chipotle and watch Disney Plus all night, we are going to do a little haul. So the first store that I went to is Daily Paper, which 
the first time I bought something from this store was in last year, December in Ghana. If you've been following me for long enough, then you definitely saw that. But I ended up getting this turtleneck sweater, which I think is really nice. I don't have anything like this in my closet. Any, almost like a crew neck sweater. So this is the Nafisi sweater in case you want to buy this. I definitely saw this online too. So even if you don't have a daily paper near you, you could definitely order this. And I just love how it fit. It gives me like that 90s kind of vibe, you know, the 90s cut, very casual. Um, almost a little oversized. The sleeves are also balloon. I think I can wear this all the time. Like, I could wear this every day and no one would care. It's pretty much just a sweater. And then I also went into Zara because I've been needing a pair of denim jeans. Mom jeans are really the only cut of jeans that I wear just because they're so comfortable. And I feel like they're the most flattering on me. Like, I'm not really into skinny jeans anymore like I was in high school. So, I just like mom jeans because, yeah, I feel like it's cuter on me. So, I got this denim blue wash. Pretty much my standard jeans. I like how it's straight at the bottom. Yeah, can't go wrong with some high-waisted mom jeans. And I was also on a hunt for a trench coat today because this coat that I wore today was making me so hot. So the way fall works in New York, the morning time is super cold. You need a jacket. By afternoon, it's summertime, and then nighttime is cold again. So I needed a jacket that could work for all three temperatures in the day. So I finally decided to get a trench coat because, yeah, I have none. And I feel like you need a trench coat for fall. Like, if you don't have one... Is your wardrobe even complete? So I ended up getting this color trench coat from Zara. So I really like it. It just seemed like really easy to throw on, which I like. And I like the color of it because I feel like it'll match everything. And it'll definitely match some of the other things that I have. Yeah, it's just like a super casual, simple trench coat. I feel like you could definitely dress this up. If you have a night out, you could wear this with like, I don't know, a cute dress and some heels. But you could also wear this to the office. Like I just felt like it was a very versatile trench coat, you know. And then the last thing that I got was a new concealer from Sephora because my NARS one just ran out. So I've really been wanting to try the Sephora Best Skin Ever um, concealer because everyone says it's really good. It makes your skin look flawless. Um, it's also full coverage, which I wanted that because a lot of times I don't wear foundation. So I want a concealer that's going to do everything. It's going to still look natural on my skin, but it's going to snatch everything up so by the time that i got to sephora i was so exhausted i literally hate going to soho it just so happened that all the stores i needed to go to were all in that place so i went but going to soho on a saturday is a nightmare there are tourists everywhere there's people shopping people all over the streets like it is literally chaos and every store in soho is the same way like pretty much chaos so I didn't really get to color match because I was just dying to get out of there and get home. So I kind of just swatched it on my hand and hope for the best. And yeah, I'm hoping that it looks the same on my skin. Like just looking at it, it looked possibly <laughs> like my skin color. I don't know. Like I, I put it on in my hand and it matched literally perfectly, blended right in. So we're actually going to try it out right now. Okay, I'm just going to blend this on my finger and hope for the best. I can't really see right now because I'm using the viewfinder but <laughs> i think it's blending out it would be crazy if i look in the mirror and i'm actually i look like a ghost <laughs> but. okay but shout out to me though because blind color matching myself as a dark-skinned woman like come on give me some credit so that is everything that i bought today the only thing i couldn't get my hands on were some good boots i saw some nice boots but i couldn't really tell if i liked or i or if i loved them so i really want to take my time to find a good pair but I need to because I've been wearing the same sneakers. I've just been wearing sneakers all the time and I really want a good pair of boots. So I can start bringing on my skirts and my dress outfits for the fall before it gets too cold. So yeah, stay tuned for whatever boots I end up buying. But right now I'm going to wash this face, wash this makeup off, shower, eat my Chipotle. But yeah, I'm just going to chill for the rest of the night. And for the rest of the weekend, I'm going to be editing this video. So I think I'm going to end it off here. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. You know, a little weekend in my life, buying stuff, getting my life together, getting the fall wardrobe in place. Because I didn't forget, I am filming some kind of lookbook soon. I don't really know when, but definitely in the next few weeks. So I'm almost ready to film that. So stay tuned for that. But Besides that, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. So I post videos every Monday at 3 p.m. So please put the button on. Ugh. So please put the bell notification on so you can know whenever I post. And I hope that everyone is staying safe, taking care of their mental health. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.